and welcome my Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Welcome to your path of true love reading, your timeless path of true love reading. I'm your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Production since 1998. Can you dig it? Author of Words of Grace from a professional witch. Writing that book saved my life. And there's a link in the description box available on Kindle. The Archangel of Lions, Mark Angelo Lions. But you can call me Mal because I am a Virgo sun, second house, four planets. It's a lot. <laughs> so uh, glad to be serving uh, my uh, fellow virgins of the Zodiac. Uh, if you are new to these readings, there is a link in the description box, a preface to the Timeless True Love Reads, explaining what the path of true love is, so I don't have to say it every time. But aside from that one, there are tons of links down there talking about soul contracts and twin flames and soulmates that you may want to check out for your further experience, entertainment, and education. Uh, that being said, it is a general read. Please take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Check your other signs because uh, we are looking at your healing journey, your hero's journey, your spiritual path, your whatever you want to call it through the soul contracts in your life, your relationships that you go through. They are not always romantic sexual. I know that's what everybody wants to know. But holographically, if you heal something in any relationship in your life, because you are the central point of every relationship you're in, uh, uh, it shifts all your relationships. So it's just like you go into therapy and they say, well, what's your relationship with your parents like, right? You start with the primary. Uh, at least the incarnational primary, your ultimate relationship is between you and the divine, and that's what being true love is all about, hence the path of true love, the hero's journey aspect of it. So we're doing a Celtic cross with some extra cards thrown in. All the decks that I read are always in the bottom of the description box. If you want a private reading with me, must be 12 o'clock <laughs> in Holbrook, Long Island. Uh, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, there's a link, booking a reading with Mal. I send it to people and they go, how do I book a reading with you? I'm like, here's a 13 minute really fun video. How about it? And they're like, oh, answered all my questions. Uh, and it's a YouTube vid. You can check that out. Otherwise, both feet on the floor, my earth signs. Uh, if you can, focus on your breath, if you will. I will do the same to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace. I can about probably one of the most important things that you can do for not just your relationship health, but your spiritual growth getting a GPS, uh, Google Maps point of view, uh, view of where you are on the path. Uh, let's do this. I'll explain the cards as I go, as the guides tell me what to say as they do. So let's do this. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. Here we go. We're going to start with the Caroline Mace archetype uh, deck. As I call upon the collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters of the path of true love, the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, as well as the divine animals, the totems, the spirit animals for the Virgo collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus signs. Watching this video, receiving this reading, beloved pantheons, two cards, one to represent the Virgo, one to represent the person crossing their path. Understanding in a general read, it can flip-flop as well as they can resonate with both sides, because oftentimes uh, archetypes can be shared. So twin flame, soulmate, family member, lover, friend, boss, co-worker, what is the dominant cards are flying. What is the dominant eighth chakra archetype? And we're gonna... It should be interesting. A lot of mutable earth going on here. Cards flying across the table. Uh, give us the dominant eighth chakra soul power being alchemized from lead to gold, toxic to healthy. Uh, path that you love. Again, this could be the Virgo. That might not be. <laughs> and who is crossing their path? Same thing. Eighth chakra dynamic. What's the hero's journey lesson power <laughs> being uh, being healed shadow to light? Well, you got the femme fatale archetype, which you would think would be a feminine family. It's not. It's wild card family. Anybody, regardless of gender or gender preference or any of that, can have this soul power, but you never know what to expect from a wild card with a detective crossing their path. So this feels very Hercule Poirot and the Countess. 
<laughs> I just binged watch all of the episodes on YouTube. Uh, Agatha Christie's Poirot, David Suchet, so genius. So let's talk about the femme fatale. I got a nice dose of this as a Virgo. You can have an archetype, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. It can come and go in a day. It could stay with you for a couple of years, or you can have it all year long, all lifelong, I mean. The shadow attribute is what's being healed. Uh, that you may not be aware of. Uh, the inappropriate use of sensuality, attachment to money and power. So femme fatale means fatal female. Matahari springs to mind, but so does Morticia Adams, right? <laughs> Excuse me. Elvira, right? You know, those kind of dark females, but understand that inappropriate use of sensuality, not necessarily sexuality, sensuality, there's a bridge there, but not exactly the same thing. With an attachment to money and power there. Mm, mm, I can relate to that. What you're shooting for here, walking the path of true love, if this is the Virgo, highlights the erotic energy of the feminine, opens your heart when your dependency is rejected. And it is a feminine energy in the sense that it is magnetic, right? The femme fatale doesn't go and chase. They, like, does Morticia chase anybody? No, she doesn't. <laughs> Absolutely no, she doesn't. Uh, she sits back and lets that yin energy pull him yin. Oh, that was bad. Uh, crossing their path wisdom family archetype of the detective, the shadow attribute voyeurism, oh, falsifying information. You might have a spy. <laughs> if you are the femme fatale, you might be spying. Uh, also the snoop, the Gladys Kravitz <laughs> archetype. Uh, the light attribute, great powers of observation and intuition, desire to seek out the truth. And that put a gold star on that, led to gold. Uh, because you can't have true love without truth within yourself, within a relationship. No hiding shit, <laughs> you know, and a good I've got a nice dose of the detective archetype that comes and goes. I was a teenager, you couldn't hide shit from me. <laughs> My parents tried, and it was the 80s. I found all sorts of goodies. <laughs> okay, now we're going to Celtic cross this. These two archetypes are the eighth chakra dynamic for our two characters in this drama. Let's see what's going on. The next four chakras down. Crown, third eye, throat and heart, the interior world, the interior world, the psychological world, the world behind your eyes. You get what I'm talking about. Breathe. Hmm. Okay. I like this feeling. As I call upon... Uh, my goddesses of earth, the sign of Virgo, and the powers of the north, please. Ten cards, we'll pull them one at a time, face up, for the Virgo collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, watching this video, receiving this reading, either the femme fatale, or the detective, or maybe both. Uh, certainly Virgos can have both of those archetypes, as can any sign, but the femme fatale, and the detective in particular, that desire to seek the truth, but also that magnetic mysterious energy there. So, heart, throat, third eye crown, what's going on for that femme fatale on the inner? Someone's having fun. Uh, the seven of flames in this deck, Bastet, the Egyptian cat goddess of the sun. She's the warm, fun sun. Her sister Sekhmet is the one that burns you to a crisp. Uh, uh, the six of flames would be the six of wands in the traditional tarot, often thought of as a victory card, but the seven of flames in this deck literally has the word victory written on it. Here we're looking at balance to desire, equal give and take, getting what you want and giving people what they want. Um, feels pretty healthy for a femme fatale, um, but remember Bastet, she, I mean, yeah, she hunts when she hunts, but you could say there's a touch of Leo energy. She is a sun goddess, uh, so that idea of just sort of basking in the sun I have three black cats. I watch it even when it's overcast. I try and bask in the sun. Let's look at this detective crossing the path here. Uh, this detective archetype, double fire energy, the Aries. Now, when it's a court card, um, this is the Maiden of Flames, Calafia, a goddess of indigenous California, uh, 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 would be the King of Wands. This can be somebody who is really dealing with those first house uh, lessons, Aries, first house, self-care, right? Self-esteem, all the self stuff. But in the shadow, 
you know, uh, voyeurism and falsifying information, we could have a little touch of a semi-narcissist vibe here. Now, I'm not saying this person is a narcissist. We all have moments. But when you get that narcissism usually comes from the neglect, that someone was neglected emotionally in their childhood, it changes the way you see it, right? That's not the vibe I'm getting here. I'm saying that if this is someone who's really what is it? A, a, a desire to seek out the truth. Very intuitive, right? Great powers of observation and intuition. This could be somebody on a path uh, for true love. So, again, sliding scale, shadow uh, to light led to gold. My goddesses, what's at the core of this? The hidden influences, perhaps even the subconscious stuff that a detective might be aware of. Uh, here we have the Eight of Blades. Chokhmah uh, is a desert goddess, I believe Israeli desert goddess, and I say Israeli Hebrew because Chokhmah is one of the spheres in the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. So please don't cancel me if I didn't get that right. Uh, but certainly the key word here, decisions. Now we're used to seeing the Eight of Swords as blindfolded and bound to those Eight Swords. Well, uh, when you're in the middle of, let's say, the Sahara Desert, just pick any desert, Mojave, pick your desert as you like. By the way, sand is Virgo, mutable earth, changeable earth, just thought I'd mention it. Uh, and you don't know which way to go. Like, everywhere you go, everywhere you look, it's the same thing, right? Dunes and hot, right? So there is a change, a, a decision here that will create change, but you got to pick one of those uh, eight blades there. Uh, and, and, you know, she's juggling it. Now, I believe Hulkma is connected to, it's got to be either the third eye or the throat chakra. I can't remember which. It's in my book, Words of Grace. Uh, but I learned uh, the connection of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life to the Chakras through Anatomy of the Spirit by Carolyn Mace. Genius book. So let's see. What got them here? What's behind them on the path of true love? High Priestess on the inside. So there is some introspection going on here, again, for the femme fatale and or the detective. There is a tuning in to the more, I'm going to get this word right, the divine aspect of intuition, right? Secret knowledge. Yes, there can be secrets being withheld here, right? Voyeurism, falsifying information. Not the vibe I'm totally getting on this. What is a priest or a priestess but a vessel through which the divine works? I mean, when I do this work, I'm essentially a priest of whatever, a channel. I don't like that word either. Uh, uh, but there are there is something mysterious here. Now, that does point to the subconscious. Uh, the, the priestess, the high priestess, is uh, a moon card, definitely element of spirit, but really talks about the subconscious mind at the... The, the water often seen behind a veil. So there are subconscious influences here that someone is tuned to here. What's crowning, sort of hovering above uh, this soul contract on the path of true love will eventually come into physical form, but there's absolutely free will about what to do with that. And we've got another court card here. Interesting, we go from Aries in the detective to Taurus. Now again, if you have planets in Aries or Taurus, you or if you're cross-watching, uh, uh, great. Then I would say that's highlighted. Look at uh, the planets that are there. But when it's a heart th third eye crown thing, the world behind your eyes, we're looking about wisdom, about what it is, fixed earth, second house Taurus, what are your life values? Now, of course, I own my own home. So that is a Taurus thing, right? It's stable. It's here. It's a long-term good, right? A long-term, I don't know, what's the word? Asset. Uh, but something I highly value. I love my home. Um, but then there's honesty is like incredibly valuable to me because so many people lie, right? There's so much lies, illusions, deceptions, and delusions. So there's an opportunity here for whoever is watching this to really get into that great, that the great corn mother, Taurus, uh, the mother of pentacles, which would be the queen of pentacles in traditional tarot, that stability inside yourself, really that sense of, no, this is my foundation, this is my bedrock, this is what is important to me. Now, could that be, for the femme fatale, attachment to money and power? 
Nothing wrong with wanting money and power, but it's the, the lead attachment, the toxic attachment to it that's the issue here. All right. And if the detective is falsifying information and being a voyeur, you need to look at your life values there. You can see the alchemy unfolding here on the table led to gold. So what is before them, right? Like what's coming right around the bend on uh, the path of true love for my beloved Virgos? All right. Reversal, the hanged man in this deck. Uh, I'll get closer so that you can see. Hopefully, you gotta pull your cell phone up to your eyes. If you see her eyes are closed above the water, you see her eyes are open below them. And that's where the halo is rather than above below. This is about sacrifice, but third, third, third eye crown sacrifice is often a more third eye in terms of seeing things differently. I, I can't help it. I studied the, the northern mysteries, right? The Norse myths about Odin and Yggdrasil, the world tree. Everybody knows about it because of the MCU. Thanks. Um, but what he had to do <laughs> to get the runes, right? To get certain gifts, he had to pluck out an eye and hang upside down for nine days on that thing. So there is a sacrifice here in some way, shape, or form. Now, I know I hear this, this is the Pisces card, and certainly there is a often a connection between the high priestess and the hanged man in terms of perhaps releasing preconceived notions on the outside in order to get a deeper truth inside. But the third eye can only see one of two things in any given moment, truth or illusion. You're either seeing through a lens clearly or seeing through a lens darkly, a glass darkly, if you want to go full on New Testament which is interesting for a witch to be talking about, I know. Uh, so, two major arcana cards on the table, two court cards, uh, and, and no real predominant uh, element energy here as of yet. Let's get the next four down. That's the cross, the timeline. Let's look at the staff. My goddesses, what is the lesson you would have the Virgo learn here? Our third, third eye crown is the nine of cups, Quan. Yin, ultimate self-love, not the 10, not the 10, not your cups overflowing, but being at peace. Kuan Yin, Chinese goddess slash bodhisattva, depends on who you read, of uh, compassion and contentment. We often go through the eight of cups going within ourselves to find that nine. So this can absolutely be about self-love for the femme fatale or the detective. Both would make sense here. Uh, and really a heart opening thing. It is going with the flow. It is saying, all right, this is, feels more the femme fatale there, right? But for that detective with that Aries card, could absolutely be your lessons or just whatever arises, love that. A book from Matt Kahn, we're using his deck in his last card down, the healing mantra deck. And my goddesses, from the outside, vibing in horizontally, how is this coming across to the world for the Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign? Three cups. This is friendly. This is emotionally bonding. This could be a friendship contract you're looking at. Uh, Lord knows my friends have saved my ass a hell of a lot more than lovers ever did. Uh, but regardless, there is a simpatico, a heart bond, not the two of cups, but the three, right? That there is a good feeling here. If you were to look at the two of you from the outside looking in, you would get that kind of like, oh, they're, 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 they're complimentary, right? Femme fatale and a detective though. Oh, I'm getting Sherlock Holmes and the lady. Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch. Why does he have to be married with kids? Because he is. Because that's just, that's fate for you, Mark. Uh, so I like that. And it certainly makes sense. If you can go with the flow on this, really love whatever is arising inside of you. Really take the time for the self-care to do the alchemy here for yourself. Your lesson feels good. We'll see what's on the outer next once we get these cards down. So what's uh, their, their hopes and fears? how their, uh, their fate can be alchemized into destiny led to gold. Alchemy uh, for the Virgos. 
the Amazon card. This is uh, the <laughs> the chariot. And I call it my Wonder Woman card. Somebody sent me this. Just the coolest thing ever, right? Oh, look, they're reversed in terms of the horsey colors. Uh, Diana, would you hold yourself there? Thank you. <coughs> this is, to me, in terms of a destiny, this is the hero taking the reins, right? Taking their inspiration, the light horse, and their inspiration, the dark horse, and bringing them together. This morning is a perfect example of... Okay, I gotta, I gotta get this done. I'm teaching. I am teaching tonight at the time of this recording. Human hero, immortal god. My first time talking about just that subject uh, online. Facebook link in the description box. Um, but then it's like, oh, okay, I gotta get this done. I gotta get this done. I gotta get this done. It's like, oh yeah, but I really wanna. I really wanna. I really wanna. And that's emotional balance, sure. Uh, the Cancerian card, you'll often hear, uh, hear it said, uh, for uh, the chariot, and the Amazon here is carrying a crescent moon shield. So I think that is pretty well represented there. There is a lot of emotion here, then, in your lesson. So Virgo, expect the path of true love in terms of the more mystical spiritual aspects to have a heavy helping of emotions. Because not seeing it here, <laughs> except maybe for that High Priestess card also connected with the moon. And of course, there may be some emotions going on there with that reversal. So one, let me just check, one, two, eh, three uh, major arcana cards. Really only two water cards here, two fire one earth. Yeah, so this seems pretty balanced. Nothing so very predominant. Last card down, please. Uh, what is the most probable outcome for the timeline of this lifetime for the path of true love for the Virgos? Your next major arcana card is the Virgo card, the wise one, the hermit. There is a maiden, a mother, and a crone in this deck. The high priestess is the maiden, the empress is the mother. This is the crone. She who rides above, right? You usually, not always, but usually see the card of the hermit depicted as being elevated. Certainly Rider Waite Tarot, that is obvious. Um, but she is carrying a wand, if you can see that in her hand, right? The little tippy tip kind of glowing right there. So there is that element of air, that blade, but it is a spirit card that allows you to go deeper in and higher up for an analytical Virgo to go past the third eye really into the crown, and if you can, up into the eighth chakra where you get more mystical information than just spiritual information because there's a difference, yeah? So this may be the Virgo being the Virgo inside of themselves. Uh, I wouldn't say completely shut off, but definitely more introspective, which does make sense with the Virgo card and with the Hanged Man and uh, with this Hermit. But the destiny is to charge forward with this on the inside. So I don't know that this is an external Yang it's not, it's heartthroat third eye crown, but there's an alignment here to really get uh, some pretty powerful messages, signs, understanding, clarity about yourself and about this relationship, which I think speaks well of the detective, but for the femme fatale uh, to perhaps someone's dependency has been rejected here, opening your heart when your dependency is rejected that could be the lesson with Kuan Yin there. All right, that's the inside. Let's look at the outside. Uh, lower three chakras, root chakra is tribal and group relationships. You have more than you realize. You start investigating, how many groups and tribes do I belong to? And it's near endless. One-on-one uh, -on -one relationship, the second chakra, think umbilical cord, that's what we're looking at here. Uh, but also on the path of true love, there is solar plexus lessons. Uh, this, the relationship to the self, your honor code, your boundaries, your survival intuition. It's your gut intuition. Self-esteem is a verb. How well do you estimate yourself in terms of hearing and acting on that guidance? From the outside looking in, from the inside looking out, oftentimes it's both. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. 
tingle, 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 as I call upon my gods of Earth, the sign of Virgo. And uh, powers of the North, please, ten cards, Celtic Cross, straight up, uh, one at a time for the Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign in this femme fatale detective uh, story, chapter, movie, uh, part of the contract, clause in the contract. We've got the femme fatale with Bastet, Six of Flames on the inner, and on the outer is the Ace of Cups. Feels like this femme fatale is like, want to sip? This is Aphrodite, sweet and flighty, runs around in a sea through nighty, and if you want to talk a femme fatale, sure, Persephone and the Underworld, sure. But Aphrodite was pretty fatal when she wanted to be. She did take up the sword, by the way, and the, the Titanomachy, not to be screwed with. Uh, so there is that, that offering of love here, but also the Ace of Cups can very much be that cup of self-love, that seed. Uh, so with the femme fatale there, uh, it feels playful, it feels good, but it definitely feels like an offer of love in some way, shape, or form. How about that detective with the Aries on the inner crossing the path? Strength. The strength card. Now look, the strength card is about courage, ultimately. This is Heracles, the Greek name for Hercules, uh, in one of his uh, labors. To regain his godhood, by the way, it wasn't just being a nice guy about it. He is a hero in the true sense, on a uh, passion for a path of personal empowerment there. Uh, so there are often fears to be faced, right? What does it take? No one's born with courage. Courage is a thing of the soul, but it is something that, you know, there's there's no magic spell for courage. Sorry, Charmed. Uh, it is something that is developed. Uh, the opposite of cowardice, right, is courage. So the lead is the, is the coward, the gold is full courage, and we're all on a sliding scale here. It is, however, a major arcana card. I don't know how afraid a detective is, but it may affect the hows, whens, wheres, and whys if they are uh, snooping, voyeurism, right? Uh, but they re it might also be that they just really want to know the truth. This might be somebody who's being a little, I don't want to say selfish, that we always see that as negative. It's not. But there may be some self-preservation here to say, no, 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 I need the details on this. That's why that could be the Virgo, too. You two might be very well, very much alike in that if you are the femme fatale. It's a very Virgo quality. It's like, uh, I want to make sure every T is crossed and every I is dotted. Thank you very much. On the inner, we got the Eight of Blades there. Some big mental decision going on with Three of Wands about loyalty. Do I want to commit to this? Do I not? Do I want to wait for this? Do I not? Um, but with the, the, the major arcana cards we've got on the table here, there's some spiritual evolution on the table that will clarify that. Uh, it, it's a general read. How? We'll see. Behind them is the High Priestess, right? That, that just feels like there's a download, there's some secret knowledge going on here, more intuitive, which would speak to both the Femme Fatale and... Uh, the detective, what's going on there? Lower three chakra dynamic, my gods. Justice. Okay. This is your first major arcana on major arcana. This is a big deal. I have a feeling there was an injustice that went on in this situation in some way, shape, or form, which would explain why strength and courage is needed by the detective while the femme fatale is having a really good time. Uh, I don't know who's Zoom and who on this. Boy, that takes a different reference now with Zoom, doesn't it? Um, but definitely, we've got Athena and Isis here. Both, by the way, virgin goddesses. Not virgins. Well, this stage, Isis is a virgin. This is before the impregnation with Osiris to make Horus. Um, that's an interesting thing. A big ass spider, right? <laughs> if I can see it from this distance, that's scary. Uh, but Athena, uh, virgin goddess, meaning that not just they never married, but no one owned them. <coughs> right? That is the original meaning of the word virgin, unowned, right? Even if you think virgin olive oil, right? They don't put it, they don't expose it to heat. You're getting in its most purest natural form. Uh, virgin land, right? Has never been uh, built upon, although it may be owned. So, there, 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 it might have been that there was a situation here on the outer in the past where justice was necessary, and inside, behind that, is this priestess 
holding the truth, right? Holding it secretly, being silent to see how things play out. Now, the justice card does say that justice either has been done or will be done, but with the other major arcana cards on the table here, I'm not so sure that that has happened yet. Hence, you, somebody, both of you, need to get really clear on what you really value. Yes, in the physical world, but you might not value the same things bedrock, right? Like, I don't want to have kids. I really don't. I don't. I don't have kids. I'm 53. Nor am I getting pregnant in this life. Uh, I have cats and companies <laughs> and used to have covens, right? So my creativity is very that. And if someone's like, no, no, I really, really want to have a kid, I'm like, deal breaker, but I love you, right? Uh, we all value different things, and, and that's fine. Um, you know, I love being self-employed as a Virgo. Other Virgos are like, no, 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 I really need something that's stable and it gets me a paycheck. I understand that, too. So, my gods, outside looking in, what's crowning here? Uh, that uh, Taurus on the inner, what's that look like on the outer? Well, the Emperor, the Zeus card here, this is a card of divine masculine energy about externalization, but often about control. Uh, the Emperor is the amalgamation of all four of the kings of the tarot, so you're looking at the spirit king here. And uh, the relationship between Athena here in your past with justice and Zeus the Emperor is pretty well defined. Athena is one of the favored daughters of Zeus. So the Emperor working with justice, with balance, uh, often seeing things from a higher uh, law, maybe not just common law, which everybody has to live with, but karmic law, universal law, spiritual law, mystical law, not all the same thing. Uh, then really is there there's an evaluation of power here before of course let's do this in Zeus language tosses that lightning bolt changing things forever which could be a tower moment let's see it would make sense though though that that Taurus on the inner Emperor on the outer if it's chosen would put you in this place of needing to see things differently as uh, uh, a reversal, turning yourself self willingly upside down to see things uh, differently. Maybe even an enlightenment moment here. What's that look like on the outer? Double whammy. Hanged man. Hanged man. <laughs> Ain't nobody going nowhere except dinner. There you go. <laughs> Virgo terrain. Yay, at least we're comfortable with it. Let's be introspective. Let's surrender. Let's let go. Let's release. Now, there is a really good book also by Matt Kahn, uh, The Universe Always Has a Plan, Ten Golden Rules for Letting Go. I only know the title that well because it's a really good book. More fifth dimensional, really leaves a lot of the old paradigm spirituality, which is all third eye, in the dust. This is a major spiritual awakening opportunity for both of you, inner and outer. Um, I don't know that this is about you sacrificing this relationship, letting it go forever, and hopefully never thinking about them again. Because what's going on here is you are both really making decisions about a loyalty to at least see where this goes. I don't get that that's it. All right, I just posted something. This, my guides talk to me all day long, but usually first thing in the morning, I'm just waking up. They said, being triggered... Being triggered is the Dr. Pill, uh, pimple Popper of the soul. <laughs> it made me laugh. I was like, oh God, that's so true. Right? The soul, if you get triggered by something, it's never about the person doing the triggering. I know it's an unpopular thing right now. But the trigger was hidden in you. They're doing you a service, right? So, I mean, you can apologize. Oh, I'm so sorry for triggering you. That's compassion. But to ultimately get that, whatever is going on here is forcing you to see this differently so you can either go with it or against it. So will you be the shadow emperor, come here, <laughs> or the light, the lead emperor, or the gold emperor here? You're going to have to really check in with your life values. Wouldn't you rather know the real truth? And maybe not just what's true in the linear, but the truth. Truth is, yes, you have had past life with these people, possibly. <laughs> hypotheticals, but most likely. Uh, yeah, this is about you. This is about your healing, no matter what they do, both sides of this. 
but are you willing to, what, for the femme fatale, release your attachment to money and power? Now, this is a very good feeling femme fatale archetype here, and this detective seems pretty strong. Uh, but I could see both of them being a little tenacious. As, no, this is the way it is. There's another way of seeing this. Hence your lesson here. Nine of Cups, Quan Yin, compassion for yourself, self-love. Now, I will say with this Ace of Cups on the outer, add that to the Nine of Cups in the lesson. You get the ten, obviously. So what does this look like? Uh, my God's lower three chakras, external dynamic, double whammy, three of Cups. Three of Cups, next card, inner, Three of Cups. You like each other. <laughs> There's an emotional bond here I don't think you can get away from, at least right now. We're all one, ultimately. All of us, I know. Sounds crazy. There's some unity consciousness. Uh, but that Three of Cups, there is an emotional bond here. And for some of you, if you are really emotionally, intuitively, energetically empathic, and that means feeling other people's uh, emotions, energies, and vibrations in your own cell tissue. Pisces moon here. Uh, it could be very much that. That the two of you are feeling the same way, but if there is no communication here going on, although it feels like that Ace of Cups can certainly be a message of love towards the detective. They've got the strength card there. I still feel like you guys need to get really, really clear that you love each other, but there are some values here that need looking at, evolving. What are the motivations here? Not what you want so much, but why? Mm, okay. This relationship, this contract vibes very friendly, very emotionally bonded. Can be, you know, people who've already passed that two of cups if this is romantic. And it is the thing of, oh, let's just snuggle all day long. Let's just call in to work and stay in bed, right? But more the emotional side of that. What's that vibing? Lower three chakras horizontally. Two of wands. All right, so this is the indecision card for me in this deck. It is Jason of Jason and the Argonaut standing outside of uh, Chiron, the, the, the centaur's uh, cave there. He had a rose quartz cave. Uh, uh, Cersei, uh, Margaret, uh, Madeline, so I forgot her name. Brilliant, brilliant book. Madeline, 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 it's gone. Uh, so he's at a crossroads. He's like, do I go in and take the quest to retrieve the golden fleece, or do I just go shopping? I'm out of here. Margaret Miller, <laughs> thank you. Spirit guides of authors and audiobooks. Uh, uh, brilliant book, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant work. So there is an indecision here, and of course we see that right with the three of wands on the outer, with the ten, uh, the eight of blades on the inner. For both of you, you know this could very much be that you've both been burnt, right? Uh, your little defensive Virgos, <laughs> the sign that always crosses its legs. Uh, that that this isn't just a choice. This is a a decision here, but the emotional part of this particularly for us Virgos, we might be like, well, that's just how I feel. What's the tea? What's actually, I want to see their spreadsheet. <laughs> what the facts? So I can make, so I can make a clear choice and decision here uh, for my well-being and for the well-being of all, and certainly your destiny uh, alchemized from fate is what you can't change. Destiny is what it turns into when you take the hero's journey. And with that Amazon on the inner you're emotionally driven here. A lot of water in this read. What does that look like on the outside, please, my gods? Uh, Queen of Cups. Yeah, ain't nobody talking about it, though. This is Scorpio card. Queen of Cups, Helena Troy. She didn't say much. She didn't need to. Her face launched a thousand ships. That Scorpio card, there is hidden emotion here, but very deep. So, again, this can be the femme fatale. This can be the detective. Could be both of you. I feel like the emotional drive is there. Right? You've got the double whammy of the Three of Cups here, but you've also got that double whammy of the Hanged Man. I think you both need to get really, really clear about what you are willing to sacrifice. The root of the word sacrifice, though, speaks more about making something sacred than it does about killing something. That's what it ended up being. The original meaning of words, Virgo. Look them up. We'll just ask, you know, your... your your IT, what is that thing called? Your artificial intelligence. What is the original meaning of fill in the blank 
and uh, gives its good Virgo trick to go, oh, so I can choose that instead of this? Yeah. So I don't think that's bad. And I think for a femme fatale, the Scorpio card of Thorpe. No, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> you know, there is something very uh, eighth house, sexual, uh, uh, compelling, magnetic uh, about that Scorpio energy for sure. And Helena Troy, like I said, she did not need to do much, but she caused a war. Well, technically, the wedding of uh, Harmonia and Cadmus with the goddess Eris throwing a golden apple into the wedding is really what started that, but that's another, that's another myth, kind of, sort of. Your outcome here is going within, right? Being the hermit, doing the Virgo thing, closing up shop and going in for self-care, self-healing, but to see things from, I'm going to say, the eighth chakra, at least the seventh chakra perspective here. What's that look like from the outer? Less tarot card down. Queen of Pentacles, double whammy with the Taurus and the crown. This is all about what is of value to you. And and again, if it's the femme fatale playing a game just for money and power, usually that's not what's going on on my channel for the people who watch. Um, but but it could it is something you really need to look inside and say, well, what is really of value to me, inner and outer? So it's interesting that what's crowning is you, as the emperor, go within and get really, really clear on what is bedrock, lifelong value of value to you, what is worthy of you, and, and what is, you know, uh, what you deem worthy, not just the physical stuff, because I feel like it's going to be presented in a person. Now, it is the Taurus card, doesn't have to be Taurus, but it is someone stable, strong, stubborn, perhaps in certain ways here. And if we look at this, we have a Virgo card and a Taurus card together. So this could be two Earth signs, and they don't have to be Taurus, uh, Virgo, Capricorn, but there is something very grounded about this outcome. Now, this could be looking at the Virgo, right? Looking at them from the outside, looking in, that they're standing their ground on what they value because they're doing the introspection and seeing it, of course, with that hangman differently. We got our tarot on the table. We've got two oracles and then that healing mantra. Can't possibly be 12 noon again, can it? <laughs> All right, Whispers of Love Oracle. Voices of the higher selves, please take a nice deep breath. As I call upon the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, please, what is the whisper of love from their higher selves? Uh, the femme fatale and the detective in this Virgo collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus, sign, path of true love, read. For the femme fatale, six of flames, play on the inner, ace of cups on the outer. What's their higher self saying? We'll do that face down. And for the detective with that Aries, uh, Calafia, Maiden of Flames, King of Wands on the inner, Heracles, Strength on the outer. What's uh, the higher self message there? For the Femme Fatale, this card keeps coming up. This is new for this series. Like attracts like. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> like I'm looking at this, I'm pretty sure uh, 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 Leo had this, and I know one other one at least had it. Uh, like attracts like. If you're longing for more love in your life, you need to be more loving. Now, the reason why I say I think you already know this is because of that Ace of Cups in play. Like, the femme fatale is either playing a toxic game, depending on their attachment to money and power, inappropriate use of sensuality, or um, they really are like, no, hey, it's okay, let's, I love you, I love you, let's not make such a big deal about this, let's have fun, let's be magnetic. <laughs> it's not my fault I look better in her party dress. <laughs> semi-precious weapon you. Uh, for the detective, right, we've got get back to what you love. Your current situation is giving you an opportunity to re-evaluate what you want. 
Eh, it's on the table. You know, if this feels, I think, healthier than one would think with a femme fatale and a detective, right? Because that detective can be about snooping and spying and internet blah, blah, blah. But the introspection part of that, I think, is really key here. For the detective to get that, yeah, they're on, I'm on a hero's journey here. I'm learning... I think both of you are really learning what's important to you with that double whammy of the Taurus on the table in terms of life value. Look, I, I love dating, usually. <laughs> Especially over the past year and a half, let's say longer than that, where there's been very little of that because the world's condition. Uh, it, it is something I like, that fun, playful stuff as a Virgo. But I say yes or I say no. It's always that. I very rarely hit on people. People hit on me, and I leave that at that. This does feel more like a datey, datey thing. Because uh, I don't think you go through this with family members so intensely. Um... So to, to really take the journey here of getting clear on what you want, because I think the femme fatale knows, it's like, look, I just want to have fun and be loving here. Let's not overcomplicate this. But there are decisions of commitment on the table. So this can be, let's just play along and see what happens from the femme fatale. But the detective might be like, mm, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that. I need to look after number one, <coughs> which is true self-care, right? To, to know what's right for them inside. Cool. Let's find out what's the aminals here. The divine animals oracle, the divine animals, the totems, the spirit animals. Not exactly all the same thing. Please take a nice deep breath. I call upon uh, <coughs> the uh, totem animals, the spirit animals. Uh, and the Divine Animals from Stacey DeMarco's Divine Animals Oracle, who walks with the Virgo, who flies with them, who swims with them, who crawls with them, uh, on the path of true love here with this femme fatale and detective chapter here, like attracts like, and getting back to what they love. The Divine Animal that, that is with them <laughs> is the red-crowned crane, which is hard to say. My my dame had a red crown crane. Magic Garden, anybody? Carol and Paula reference? No, millennials. Uh, very very beautiful card, the red crown crane. Uh, I need the mic the the microscope. Loyalty is the key word, says the magnifying glass. Card number twenty nine. Three of Wands for me is the loyalty card. It's not always about loyalty to another person. Your loyalty to your path. Loyalty to anything. Let me, I just read the beginning and the ending of this. There's such good info in here. Uh, but it's a bit much for one reading. Cart, breathe. Remember to breathe. Card number 29, the red crowned crane. Loyalty is our key word here. The time has come to re-examine your loyalties. It's all over the table. It's all over my dining room table. Uh, are you able to be trusted? Ooh, for a femme fatale and a detective in their shadow. Ooh, are you able to be trusted? Keep your word if you give it. Take relationships slowly and make sure to build strong connections. What promises have you made and must keep? I was in a relationship with a Virgo for a very long time, actually two in a row. I don't know what came over me. Uh, but the promises that were made just violated, right? They did not keep their promises, and not just through lying, but through not speaking the truth, right? Very much withheld information. That drove me, I wouldn't say crazy, but mad, spiritually mad, because what I was feeling on the inside didn't match what was going on on the outside, and that will drive an empath cuckoo unless they understand uh, how the energy dynamics work here. So there's definitely the red-crowned crane. <laughs> you try saying that. You try saying that over and over and over. I'm just going to read the magic. Uh, crane magic is about loyalty and steadfastness. Now, isn't that Taurus, that Taurus energy, that queen of pentacles, that corn mother, right? It's steadfast and strong. Uh, in this world of instant gratification and short attention spans, Perhaps the idea of loyalty is beginning to be a lost ideal. The graceful crane teaches us that remaining steadfast to those who deserve it is a positive ideal and something to treasure. 
thinking carefully about our promises and keeping our word means that we become people to be trusted by others and ourselves. With this Justice card behind you, with the High Priestess, I feel like there might have been some withheld information here uh, that created an injustice situation, but I feel like the Divine balanced it in the sense that it set you up in this new situation, the Femme Fatale and the Detective, where the Femme Fatale, it feels like it's forgiving and playful. It's like, look, here's the couple of. I'm leaving it on the table. You want to take it, you take it. I'm good if you don't. Ultimate loyalty is to myself. I get that there is a... Uh, a journey we're both on here, but at the moment, I'm just going to send you love, right? I'm just going to bless you because there is a loyalty issue here. And really, how, let, let's, let's second house Taurus this, how valuable are your promises, Ugh, right? Your loyalties. There's a difference between a promise, an oath, and a vow. A promise, what does that mean nowadays? Next to nothing, right? But usually to another individual you make a promise. There are exceptions. Uh, an oath is usually to a group, an organization, a tradition, something like that. But a vow involves the gods. It's why a wedding promise is like an engagement. Like, I, I, I promise, uh, will you marry me? Yes, maybe, maybe not, that'll happen. But once you bring in vows, the divine is involved. So this is on a promise level here. I feel like there may have been some promises been broken here, but it seems like it's necessary to get this soul contract back on track. Is this absolutely screaming at the top of the lungs romantic? Not necessarily, but there it's in there if that's the story. And I'm not just saying that as a YouTube reader. It's like I could see that there were promises made here that either weren't fulfilled or were completely uh, uh, lied about. Let's see. Last card down. Matt Con Healing Mantra deck. Doesn't matter who you are in this. Femme Fatale archetype or detective archetype. Work this mantra. It will help this heal and move it along. Please take a nice deep breath. As I call upon the Ascended Masters of the Path of True Love, please, one card in clarity for the Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. <coughs> Watching this video. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Since I haven't been coughing all morning, I'm going to say that there is something that has not been spoken here that needs to be spoken, right? That throat chakra getting something off the chest here. And it is emotional. I think somebody's not speaking the truth about how they feel here. And it's making it very hard to evaluate on both sides of what is really important. So please, Ascended Masters, the perfect healing mantra for this Virgo collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. Uh, what's their perfect healing mantra for uh, the femme fatale and the detective? Liberating love. I think this is going to mean more than just what's on this card. Uh, I allow myself to receive all the fulfillment I'm willing to give, which does make sense with that Ace of Cups, with the Strength card, with the Hanged Man, with that double whammy Taurus. There are major decisions being made inside of both of you right now that is certainly going to affect the decision that you make uh, as to whether or not you guys want to continue investing in this. There's a strong emotional bond between the two of you. Maybe even an intuitive, empathic, emotional bond. You're feeling other people's stuff. Possible. Uh, but let me read this. Liberating love. Because this is just... Uh, this is about really honoring where your heart is. Right? Uh, whatever arises, love that. Matt Kahn's first book. Everything is, uh, everything is here to help you. His second book. So pay attention to how your heart is feeling as I read this. I don't need this for this one. Um, liberating love. I allow myself, there's a key word, allow, I allow myself uh, to receive all the fulfillment I'm willing to give. And we know Virgos are givers, servants of the Zodiac. When love is liberated, your heart remains open to all the gifts that life has to offer. Most of the time, we would hope, as love is liberated from the emotional wounds of the human condition, of which there are multiple versions, it becomes easy to accept, forgive, and receive when such actions seem exhausting. <laughs> Just like, I don't even want to fucking think about this anymore, let alone feel it. 
that's what that's saying. I don't want to deal with this anymore. It is simply a sign that your heart doesn't feel safe enough to remain open. Hence this ending with this contemplation of what's really of value to you with that Virgo card on the inner. Uh, when this occurs, your wills, throat chakra, freedom to embrace each tender corner of your consciousness will allow opening to resume. I feel like that's that Ace of Cups on the outer with this Nine of Cups in your lesson. No, no shit. It is. It's about I'm going to embrace every tender corner, everything I feel about this, and this false idea that if you feel it, you're going to replay it according to the law of attraction is old paradigm. That's third and fourth dimension. This is a fifth dimensional read. This is about understanding that whatever is being triggered here within you, you need to give yourself the love that only you can give you. It's what the path of true love is in order to heal this either side, right? Uh, to alchemize it. I mean, I get what this is about. Uh, when the heart has permission to open, your love is liberated, and you can shine a light into all levels of reality to awaken the truth of all, that the truth that you need is within... Oh, I'm the first one to ever say that, said no one ever except the first person who said it. Uh, there is a lot of love here, but this is really about loving yourself as the femme fatale absolutely giving yourself that cup of love and maybe like liberating love when your heart opens offering it but with the detective there is something similar there but they've got that strength card look hercules all of his 12 labors were about bowing or kneeling symbolically or literally check it out very much about surrender and sacrifice so this is for both of you. This mantra is ideal for learning how to believe in yourself, particularly the heart chakra stuff, promoting self-realization and integrating the shadow, allowing the shadow sides of this to have their voice without them running the show. Shadow work seems like it's just been created on the planet. No, it's ancient. It's shamanic. It's three nights in the great sarcophagus of the great period, the mystery schools of Egypt. It's the Elysian mysteries of Greece. It's just been going on. It's, it's clan of the cave bear read the book, then watch the movie. <laughs> Don't do it the other way around. Daryl Hannah alert. So what we've got here is a femme fatale and a detective liberating love with loyalty. Is the chug and betcha that's what's written in in the in the, the the title bar here. Let me give you the blessing to put this all together. Please take a nice deep breath. As I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine to please bless the Virgo collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign watching this video, receiving this reading with all that they need on the path of true love, that if they are the fem fatal, that they highlight the erotic energy of the feminine within them, opening their heart, liberating love, when their dependency has been rejected and for this detective that they can really tune to their great powers of observation and intuition paired with their desire to seek out the truth. As the femme fatale really gets that they're longing for more love in their life, so they need to be more loving, liberating love to their own hearts and whoever else this is on the path to them, right? Maybe even just flowing that Ace of Cups gently, simply, playfully. Uh, and for this detective archetype that they get back to what they love, their current situation giving them a genius opportunity to reevaluate what they really want, which we see with that Taurus second house vibe here with the emperor covering it in the, the, cr the crown and it's showing up full force in the outcome with the, the hermit on the inside, the wise one that this comes about through wisdom so that they can really look at this magic, work with this magic of the red crowned crane for the loyalty to themselves, to their souls, to their spirits, then to each other in this as they both liberate love, allowing themselves to receive all the fulfillment they're willing to give so that they are in balance, so that they're moving more into the gold than into the lead, so that they can become the best that they can be, fulfilling this soul contract and really becoming a full, badass Virgo hero on the path of true love for the well-being of all. So it be. So it is. It's a good read. No path of true love reads is without uh, its fly and the ointment, its turd and the punch bowl. 
none of this goes on without lead. Because how is it supposed to be a healing journey without something to heal? So thank you so much for watching. If you want more, please subscribe, comment, just say, oh, this is my brother I'm dealing with, or my sister, or my lover, or my ex. I would love to know. Uh, and uh, by all means, if you want a private read, link in the description box. Booking a reading with Mal, it's a fun bid. Uh, uh, and certainly, if you want to come take one of my classes on Facebook, there are links in the description box. They are paid, but you don't need to be on Facebook to take them. I don't know how that works. It's a Zoom link anyway. So, uh, that we do it all on. So, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Uh, wishing you the very best and the very blessed of my fellow Virgos. Virgo power on the path of true love. Now, farewell. And blessed, blessed be.